Hey folks, big news. I have in my hand a decision by a federal district court judge in Colorado in joining a so-called assault weapon ban and a large capacity magazine ban by a town in Colorado on the grounds that it violated the Second Amendment. Stay tuned. Find out more. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Boxes Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the U.S. Supreme Court Bar. If you haven't subscribed to the Four Boxes Diner Second Amendment channel, please do so and show your love for the right to keep and bear arms. Okay, folks, this is big news. This is the first federal court decision. In fact, it's the first court decision of any sort after NYSERPA versus Bruin applying the decision of NYSERPA versus Bruin to the Second Amendment in a gun ban challenge of any sort. What happened is the town of Superior in the state of Colorado passed an assault weapon ban, propaganda term, of course, uh, dealing with semi-automatic rifles such as AR-15s and AK-style firearms. And they also banned so-called large capacity magazines, which, as you know, are just standard capacity magazines. So the town of Superior in Colorado passed these laws. They went into effect on July 1st. A lawsuit was filed by several plaintiffs, including the Rocky Mountain Gun Owners Association. Applaud to them. They sued, they sought that, they asked the federal district court to enjoin it on the grounds that under the Bruin case, these firearms that were being banned, as well as the magazines, were, these bans were unconstitutional under the Second Amendment. And Judge Raymond Moore, a federal district court judge appointed by, ready for this, folks? Barack Obama. A Barack Obama judge in Colorado has enjoined on Second Amendment grounds a gun ban and a magazine ban because they violate the Second Amendment. This is huge news. This just shows goes to show you how well-written and crafted, as I predicted, the judge Ju Justice Clarence Thomas's opinion in Bruin was because even, I would say, you know, Democratic appointees to the federal bench are going to have a hard time trying to get around this law and uphold gun control laws, even if they want to. I don't know if that was the view with Judge Moore or not, but whatever it was, he did an excellent job following the Bruin decision very clearly. He starts off quite clearly. He says, look, I've read this statute. I've looked at the papers by the plaintiff gun owners and the gun rights groups, and I take a look at this and I say, hey, these laws are trying to ban AR-15 style rifles, AK-47 style rifles, and these magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. And he's like, look, these are clearly commonly owned by Americans. He looked at old data, not even the most recent data. He looked at old data from many years ago to say that even years ago, there were tens of millions of gun owners that own these types of firearms and they own these types of magazines. So it's pretty clear they're commonly owned by Americans for lawful purposes, the judge said. And as a consequence, they're protected arms under the Second Amendment's right to keep and bear arms. So then he goes on to say, okay, so now that I know these firearms that are being banned by and banned and restricted by this town ordinance, now that I know they're protected arms under the Second Amendment, they clearly are. Now the burden shifts to the government to demonstrate that there is some sort of historically analogous law or regulation at the time of the founding to show that these types of laws are constitutional. That's what the judge said. That's what Bruin said. And he says, at this point, I have nothing really to go on because it's early in the case, but I'm going to take a look at what the town said. And, and he looked at the justifications for the law by the town, when the town passed the law. And he looked at them all and he says, hey, I understand these public policy arguments. By the way, the list was mostly just anti-gun propaganda, in my opinion, it was the typical stuff, you know, these weapons are used in mass shootings, these weapons are used to hear, you know, the usual stuff about how these weapons are misused. And the judge says, yeah, I see all this, but this is, has nothing to do with what the Supreme Court tells me I have to do because I'm an inferior court. Keep this in mind, that under Article Three of the US Constitution, which creates our federal judiciary, you have a single superior, a single Supreme Court. That's what Article 3 of the U.S. Constitution says. Article 3 talks about the judiciary. It says you will have one Supreme Court, which is, of course, the Supreme Court. Then you will have what are known as inferior courts. Not my language, the, the, the Constitution's language. As you will have inferior courts set up by Congress as Congress deems appropriate. Well, a district court judge and courts of appeals are be below the Supreme Court, thus they're inferior to the Supreme Court, and that means that they have to follow the superior court, which is the Supreme Court itself. So Judge Moore did exactly that. He says the burden of proof shifts to the government, the town of Superior, to show there's a historically analogous gun law that bans these types of weapons. 
he's not aware of any. The town didn't make any reference to this in the ordinance. He doesn't think they exist. And therefore, as a consequence, the ban is unlikely un to be found unconstitutional. So he enjoined it because he said that even a day of a violation of the Constitution is irreparable harm to these plaintiffs. And the government has no justification, nor does the government have any desire according to Judge Moore, in upholding or enforcing an unconstitutional law, which these gun bans and magazine bans clearly are, as Judge Moore saw it, by applying the Bruin case to the facts of this. So again, I think this is hugely great news for us because it demonstrates that the way the Supreme Court wrote the Bruin case is very favorable to gun rights plaintiffs, very favorable to gun owners, very favorable to a broad interpretation of the Second Amendment, which I think is appropriate, and it shows that it's going to be much more difficult for anti-gun judges, and I'm not suggesting the judge more is, by the way, but it's going to be very difficult for anti-gun judges to try to wiggle around um, any of the language of the Bruin case and uphold gun control laws. I think it's going to be extremely difficult. So I think this decision in this case out of Colorado is the start of what I expect to be a long and wonderful series of victories for the Second Amendment and for gun owners and for firearms rights in the United States. Okay, well, I hope you learned something here today at the Four Boxes Diner. If you haven't subscribed, please do so, and we'll see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up, table 2A.